of the main issues with carburetors is anytime you change something with the engine or the altitude or heck even the season, it can throw off the optimum settings. So you're always wondering, am I running too rich? Am I pushing too much gasoline through the engine? That just wastes horsepower and gas. But you don't want to go too lean, which doesn't put enough fuel through the engine because then you can get into detonation and start destroying parts. That's why I was excited when I was able to put in one of Holly's wideband O2 controllers and gauges. It actively monitors the air fuel ratio going through your engine and tells you in real time what you've got. That way you know you never go too lean and you can tune your carburetor for maximum fuel efficiency and throttle response. So that we can see just how well this new air fuel gauge works, I went in and screwed up the settings on my carburetor and now we'll use it to bring it back into spec. As you can tell, I've gone a little too lean with the jets. I've got 70 jets in here and I'm running too close to my air fuel ratio. That puts me in danger of getting into detonation and hurting my engine, so I want to back off on that, open up the jets a little bit, and put some more fuel into the mixture. Tuning a carburetor isn't difficult, and although there are several things you can do to dial in your carb, changing the jets has the biggest effect on overall performance. On a holly carb, changing the jets is quite easy. The first step is to drain the fuel bowls. The easiest way to do this is to carefully pull one of the lower bolts holding the fuel bowl in place and allow the fuel to drain out of the cup. The lid off a can of spray paint is practically perfect for the job. Next, finish removing the other three bolts and pop the fuel bowl off. Looks like it's finally time to replace that gasket. And then remove the metering block. You may have to use a flat bladed screwdriver to get a little leverage, just be gentle. Depending on your carburetor, you may also have another metering block on the back of the carb. There are two jets in each metering block, just below the power valve. The jets are slotted, so you can use a screwdriver with a wide blade to simply unscrew them from the metering block. But if you're regularly working with carburetors, it's definitely worth investing the 15 bucks for a jet tool. The tool is made so it centers in the jet, so that the jet can't get damaged. Here's a selection of jets. They meter the amount of fuel going through the carb by the size of the hole. Holly's jets are all marked with numbers to make life simple. The larger the number, the larger the metering hole, and the more fuel that gets mixed in with the incoming air. Installing a new jet is simple. Just place it onto the tool and thread it into the metering block. Just make sure the jet is good and snug. You don't have to use Gorilla Force to tighten it down. Now, put your carburetor back together and it's time to go for a ride. Now we're on to round two, and I purposely went too far just to see what the gauge would do. Put in 74 jets all the way around. And as you can tell, we're way too fat now. I'd like to be in that 12 and a half to one range, but what's cool is I found out immediately my air fuel ratio, so I can stop, change it again, and get back on the road quickly. Okay, here we are for round three. Change the jets again. We're up to 72 all the way around and it looks like I'm just about right. I'm running about 12 and a half to one air fuel ratio, which is perfect. It keeps me out of that danger zone so I don't have to worry about going too lean, but I've got good fuel economy and a great throttle response. You know, I'm really happy with this Holly Wideband O2 gauge. It let me tell immediately what my carburetor needed and fixed it. So I'm back on the road. I'm confident that everything is right and I can enjoy my car and have fun. And what's cool about this is I definitely wanted it in place before we finished Horsepower Monsters Project Motor because just like you, whenever you put a lot of time, energy, and effort into a new motor, you want to make sure you give it the best operating conditions possible so it's going to run like it needs to and it doesn't tear itself up. So when I get the motor in here, I'm going to depend on the Holly Wideband O2 gauge to make sure it has what it needs so it'll live a long, happy, and healthy life with lots of burnouts. <laughs> 